Ah, no! A few moments later. Ah, no way! <laughs> Oh, quarter to ten in the morning for a Saturday, i got to tell you, it feels a lot, lot earlier. I've had to go and check the bed twice because I thought I might have done a train spot and it feels that early. But, uh, yeah, hi, welcome to the channel if you're new here and welcome back if you've been here before. It's going to be a good one, this one. Going to be heading somewhere we've never been before. So, let's get on the road. freaking nuts to be fair truth be known we're heading to the north york moors and the reason i'm going there is because yesterday i checked the weather report and it's supposed to be nice and sunny there today and for the next few days yeah <laughs> seriously like everywhere else is supposed to be cloudy and rainy except for far in the south so i figured this would be the best destination i guess i was wrong but it is what it is you know you know it's mid-winter in England, there's not a lot we can do about it, but this should be a pretty epic trip either way. I've got three to four days in the North York Moors. As I say, never been there before, so I've checked out a ton of decent places and a ton of decent spots to camp out for the night. And I've got to be honest, after doing my research, it looks pretty good. We've got castles, we've got coastline, we've got beaches, we've got open wide moorland spaces. This place has got a little bit of everything to offer, I kid you not. But I have to be honest, because it's such an epic trip, I've been busy all day yesterday trying to get stuff started. I did a sneaky little wumble down to the old idler. mission to be fair but a well worthwhile one got a couple of new upgrades for this trip which i'm kind of psyched about beanies are one of them you know you know somebody sent me some beanies this week check this out really psyched with these not one da -da -da -da. not two da -da -da, but three beanies honestly i was only expecting to get one from you guys and you sent three that's absolutely legend check these things out totally handmade with love and style from you guys up at granny's bay livam st anne's up near where my unks lives absolutely legendary really i really appreciate this they're gonna keep me really warm in the car thanks so much and on top of the beanies i've also got a couple of other upgrades i finally got the wind slayer arrived i've tested it out a little bit and I'm not convinced, but we'll just have to see how it goes on this trip. And on top of that, I've got one other funky upgrade, which I kind of toyed with whether to get or not. There's a few things I wanted to get, but uh, I wanted to get a Ridge Monkey, and I basically couldn't get it before I left on this trip. So instead, I got this other upgrade, which I think is going to be very, very useful, but probably only during the winter months. So I've got two spots I'm considering starting this trip at. One is the Helmsley Castle and the other one is the Gormir Lake. I figure I'm just going to like kind of drive up there, probably stop for a pit stop and make a decision which one of them I'm going to go to when I get close up. But they're both on the southwest side, so that's my shortest destination into the North York Moors. The sat nav, oh mama! She's being optimistic, you know, you know. She's saying around two hours, which should get us there about half past 12. So, oh yeah, feeling good about this one. It's gonna be a buzz, three, four days. I think it's about time we got some sneaky baseline on the radio and got ourselves right up to the moors. Let's do it. Oh 
Oh yeah, check this one out. And kind of one of the reasons why I'm going on this trip. This week's not been kind to me, let's say. After rushing back from the last trip on Tuesday evening, thinking I was at the grind, shit the bed o'clock Wednesday morning, I rushed over there only to find that, um, let's say, my services were no longer required. Check this one out, and it is what it is. They let me go for talking on the job. Not like not talking or not grinding, but just talking. You gotta be having a laugh. Talking, me, I mean, what would I have to say, you know? I gotta be honest, I didn't see the freaking gulag sign above the door when I went in there. I should have looked more closely. Which is kind of why I'm going on this trip. And I know this might sound weird to some people, but I wanted to prioritize the YouTube over the grind. It's a bit of a weird one to be fair. I mean if you follow the series you'll kind of know that obviously we'd love to be full time on YouTube and I kind of feel like we're at that midway point at the minute where we're having to like stick with the grind and sort of do the YouTube on the side as a part time fixture as well. I gotta be honest and I kind of like never talk about this with you guys but it's looking really positive. Every video I'm putting up is getting really good views for the amount of subs I've got and if it keeps going and growing the way it is doing, and more than likely we'll be full time and living the dream by the end of the year. I have been in a position a couple of three years ago where I was making enough cheese on the internet to survive for about 18 months. So I know it is possible, and I think a little bit more hard grinding and dedication towards YouTube might pay off. And I want to get a couple of weeks ahead so I can focus properly back on the grind. Either way it is what it is, there's nothing you can do, you know, you know. And we're just going to have a buzz and a great little trip for the next three or four days and enjoy it. And not give a shit about anything else. I'm fine. Buzzing already and I still got, Christ, 90 miles to drive. Yowza. Oh, my days. It's all about the fog, baby. Dang, look at it. It ain't stopped for 30 miles, man. The whole country's covered in fog. Yowza! It's going to be sick ass views today. Oh joyous of joy, I'm about to come off the first motorway. I've only got another 83 miles and 1 hour 40 to go. Oh joy of joys. <laughs> Here we go down, I don't know if you see it. Ooh, oh, the north. Damn, I nearly lost the lane bro. Hey, and that guy was speeding up my jack set. Wowza. Ouch. Doncaster Hall and the north. Look at that into the fog in the north man that's how it is up here that's why people are so depressed up here man just living in fog all the time never see anything <laughs> Shot a gridlock. Oh man, two lanes closed. Darn it, only got a mile to go down this road till I get off it. Well, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty gnarly, man. Check it out. Look, the whole motorway is closed for like two junctions. So they're diverting like a million cars through the side of Doncaster. Well, made a decision on our first port of call then. Gourmet Lake, I think it's gonna be for the trek around there. Just this gridlock's mad. And well, it's 10 minutes quicker to get there, so 10 minutes. Woohoo! Yeah, check this gridlock on oh, my days for like half an hour already. And I'm gasping for the toilet. I need one of them, like, what are they called? I need like a lady funnel or something. <laughs> so I can piss while I'm driving. Oh, yeah, mama, look at the glowing light and lit up sign of the services. Oh, my days. Gotta get in there quick. This is bad news. Oh no, this looks familiar. Looks shit. <laughs> oh it is, it's the shit one man. Check it out, we've been here before. Oh, probably on the way to Yorkshire thing. All right, I won't stop at the garage, I've got to show you the shit one at the back man. I've got to be already up though. I am absolutely gasping. Yeah, let's do it. Nice little motorhome thing going down there. I want my one of them bad boys. All my days, all my days. Well, I'm not messing about. I'm going to get straight in there. Otherwise, I'm going to be sitting in a wet patch for the next two hours. All right, go, go, go. Mate, that was so close. I nearly left the trail going on into the toilet there. It was so close. Dang. Ah, oh, didn't buy a coffee. Nightmare. You know why? 
because I was made of flask, in it. I, you know, mock chuck, bad boy goodness at like three pound eighty or whatever it is. Oh man, and check it out. Still feels warm after about an hour and a half because I've warmed the flask up with hot water put before I put the coffee in. Took one of your tips, guys. Oh no! Oh well, that's that's great. Fucking things leaking, man. Oh no! He's like bolt to wind. All over my crotch. Hey! <laughs> Check it out. Oh, mate. Them stains are not coming out at all. I look like I pissed myself. Oh, man. I've cleaned my flask and it looks like I put it back together wrong. I think it's that freaking rubber bit. I think I put it the wrong way around. Oh, mate. I wonder why the lid didn't quite fit properly. Oh, yeah. That feels better. You know what? It ain't even that warm. It's lukewarm after all that. Right, let's get back on the road. How oh, my days? Well, didn't catch it on camera, but I've just seen a sign on the motorway that I've never seen before. Gotta slow down to 60 because there's a cyclist on the motorway. I mean, hell, what? <laughs> yeah, man. But he's buzzing along, you know. Here we go then. Heading towards Thursk and Teesside, apparently. Into the fog again, you know, you know. It ain't stopped, man. 120 miles, still foggy. Well, I can't see it, but I kind of feel it. And when I wind the window down, I can definitely smell it. I think we're in the countryside now. Damn, it freaking stinks. <laughs> oh, look at that. We've got a sign for Scarborough. <laughs> hey, wicked, man. Kind of up on the coastline, I think. Tell you what though, one thing for shiz. It's gonna be as cold as a snowman's butt cheek for the next couple of days, man. It ain't looking good. I mean, I'm not being funny, eh? like, you might not see it, but that side, oh, bollocks, is hedgerow, is pure cloud and gray. And boom, shanker, baby. Oh, mate. Oh, we're, we're, we're driving into paradise here. We're living the dream. Oh, yeah, baby. This is like epicness on an ubertastic level. Honestly, I'm, I'm about set to explode. Somebody better get the giant size zero cell and plug it in, because I is buzzing. Oh, yeah. 30 mile an hour. I don't want another speeding ticket. I got a sneaky suspicion that I actually uh, picked one up on the way back from the last trip. It was random as hell. I took a turn off the motorway that I, I, I never take. I was like flapping to get off my junction and uh, yeah, flashity flash with the camera, you know. Well, I appreciate it's only the tip of the iceberg. We've got a lot more to see, but uh, welcome to the North York Moors, everybody. On the northeast side of England. None too shabby, eh? It's looking pretty sweet. Oh, 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 it's busy. Hey, this is it, this is it, we're here. Oh mate, everybody else went left side and I went wrong side. No, that ain't it. Maybe here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sutton Park Payne Display Albert. Alright, we're in. Damn, this place is popular. There's big old car parks around here. Oh, I really hope this pay and display thing takes cards because about when I know cash for it. Dang, right, I'll go find out. Oh, no way, check it out. It's one of these where you got to put your car registration in so you can't pass your ticket on. <laughs> no way, it's just spat my ticket on the floor. Well, that's that sorted then, but uh, hey, check this out. <laughs> I'm showing you pictures of my crotch or anything, but uh, yeah, hey, the coffee stain, you know, you know, massive stain, look like I weed myself. All right, I think I'm going to get my bits together and uh, get on this trail. No messing, let's do it. Moldy cheese sandwich to start the trail. Get out. And I hope I'm not being foolhardy here. I've uh, I've not got a coat on my back. I've uh, just got the jumper and one of them new woolly hats. So I hope it's enough and I hope the weather don't turn. But yeah, here we go. Smiling already. Well, 
legendary start to the trail as always uh, we're going the wrong way i've got to cut back start it good start to it then Sutton Bank National Park Centre gateway to the north of Moors and we found a trail over here so we're all good game on oh man looks like we're above the clouds or something here looks a bit uh ominous <laughs> you do well it looks kind of cool with that cloud but I'm not gonna lie oh, I wish it weren't there I reckon we'd have some absolutely sick old views down into the valley here to start the trail none too shabby already i hope it clears i hope it clears here we go then pretty cool this one the kilburn white horse yeah the infamous white horse or the famous one gormir lake loop from Fernby. you know you know um got some nice looking bits on it ah let's have a look woman white horse yep um some hood hill plantation the gormir lake and i think we actually get up top above the gormir lake but uh yeah for a quick squeeze at the map we're right right at the start coming up to number one and it scoots around a decent area um i think it's about six miles should take about two and a half they say so probably about three and a half should get back to the car about half four just in time for the footy all right oh wow pretty kind of cool if you know what i mean um this is the first thing on the trail as i'm using all um komoot now I get heads up for what's on the trail. 1939 to 45, it's, uh, it's a little memorial for all the pilots and so forth and crew that died around this area during the Second World War, I think. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool. Nice to be remembered that way. I'll tell you what as well, I don't know if you'll get much of a shot of it. Um, try and get up a little bit higher. It feels a little bit like, uh, I don't know, Switzerland down there. I don't know why, I'm just getting that vibe. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Looks pretty weird with these clouds going on. Pretty cool. Well, it's nice to get from these guys. Some tiny views, but I've got to tell you, it ain't warm. I really wish you'd brought me coat. My hands are frozen. I left my gloves in the car as well as the coat. What oh, a numpter. Feeling all hardcore like, yeah, I'll be good. But I'm cold. Yeah. It's damn nice to be here though. After three hours of driving, finally in the North York Moors. Well, on the edge of it, I think, by the looks of that spot where we parked. Well, we're getting a bit closer to this uh, whirlwind horse, but call me stupid. What are all they? What are they for? I thought they were like pig pens or something. <laughs> They've got wheels on them and stuff. What the heck are they? I wonder if it's... Oh, wait, they're gliders. Because if you check on the map, there's a little airfield there. And I was thinking it was kind of like down there and I couldn't see it. But of course, it's a grassy airfield. That's awesome, that gives me flashbacks of learning to fly microlite in Chiang Mai, I think it was, in North Thailand. I haven't got a license, but I can fly a microlite, safely take off, fly around and land. And i got to tell you, if you know anything about flying microlites and learning to fly microlites, check this out, right? The stopping distance of the microlite I had was 270 metres. The length of the runway was 300 metres, and at one end, we had some really high trees that you had to drop down over to get onto the runway. It was always best coming the other way, to be fair. Oh, yeah. And it was grass. <laughs> and at the other end was rice fields. i got to tell you, I might put a link in the description, actually, because the dude that taught me prior was an absolute legend, to be fair. He was awesome. And what a buzz it was for a month, every single day, flying a microlight for a couple of hours. Absolutely awesome. I like actually flying it myself, you know. I did it as well because I had a little plan while I was living in Koh Samui to go back there and get like a seaplane microlight type thing and start doing tourist trips around the island. Yeah, I couldn't muster together the 40k I needed to buy the plane, but uh, somebody actually does it on the next island now. Nice, real nice. Wow. Check this out. This is a pretty sick shot. All the cloud rolling in. Down in the valley. Pretty sweet colours, man. Pretty tidy looking day. Looks a bit uh, eerie down there, you know. Moving fast then. <laughs> well, here we go then. We've had some inside information from people on the trail. You can't see the white horse, but we're going to be above it. And if you want to get down below it, see it like up so we can see it right we're gonna hike down about 150 steps to see it and then back up you know and apparently 
It's not so much white horse now, more of an old grey nag. <laughs> Apparently it's in need of a little bit of a... Yeah, see how it's needed. Ah, well, there's heights all the way down. I'm gonna have to hike all the way back up. It looks pretty good though. Looks sick from down here, but uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a gritty patch of land from up here. I'm gonna have to hike down if you want that shot, or maybe I'll just blag it with another shot like I just did. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Well, a little bit of sneaky imp about it. This thing's been around ages, like 1857. It was built by like the master of the local school who took up his inspiration and took his lackeys, i.e. the pupils from the school, uh, who marked out the figure of the horse on an hillside above the village. Yeah. And then to top it off, they sprinkled six tons of limestone on it to, I guess, fill the gaps. Well, according to the trail map, we got to go down this way anyway, so, uh, yeah, we should get a pretty good shot of it. Let's have a look. Well, brace yourselves. Um, yeah, the Kilburn White Horse, built with blood and sweat from young souls. All right, not quite. And in all fairness, you need a drone to see it proper, but there's no way I'm hiking all this way with a drone. It's heavy as heck. But yeah, one of the North York Moors quintessential spots ticks off the box. Let's move on, let's do it. Check this little spot as well. It looks like a decent place for car camping. Well, they can't camp over here at night. A little van behind me down the way. Pretty tidy. Oh, that fraggles that idea, you know. That's the thing with my drone, I think it's a DJI Mavic Pro 1. Uh, I've had it about four years, I guess. But it's not a mini, and because of that, it's like, it's got this big old case, it's almost like the same size as the back of my backpack, and it's dead thick, and it weighs quite a bit. I'd probably hesitate to guess at about eight kilos or something. And because it's so bulky, it's awkward getting it in the back of the bag, to be honest. It's good to use when I'm like actually parked in spots, like for a run we're down to this car park, could have got the shot of it, you know. And also because it's like three years old, I think it only does 4K at 30 frames a second. So yeah, it's kind of old now and a little bit dated, but still get some good shots of it now and again. And I guess I really should try and use it more, to be fair. Ooh, a lot of logging going on in these parts. I don't know what they use it all for, surely and hopefully not just for like firewood or something. I'd hope it's a bit more uh, used for something useful, you know. Maybe it's that tree management where they're like clearing land and allowing the other trees to grow and clearing bits. I don't know. Pretty nice area though. Down in a woodland now, don't you do? Pretty varied this trail. To be fair, you know, we're out in the North York Moors again, never been here before, so it's all like a bit of a learning curve again. I've tried to do my best and find some decent trails and decent spots that we can visit, but to be fair, that's kind of why I like subscribe to Komoot this time around. As I said on many other videos, the difference between all trails and Komoot is quite, quite a big one. Like down here in the North York Moors, I can just go on the app before I left and it gives me all the highlights of the area that you really want to see. You know, there's like some wave stones and some castles and Robin Hood's Bay and so forth. And from that, you can then choose what trails you're going to do and where you're going to car camp. You don't really get that on all trails, if I'm perfectly honest. Oh, mate, talking to trails. Nala, there's about eight different ways to go there. Oh, here we go. Oh, my geez. <laughs> what? Where's that at? It says I need to cross the road. Hey, it looks, all looks a bit random to me. That's a bit of a weird one with these apps, and I'm not gonna lie, you kind of get like trail anxiety, like you like meander off the trail a couple of meters and you're sort of paralyzed. Oh man, I'm gonna lose the trail, but it could be better in some ways to actually have like a compass and an actual paper map. Good old ordnance survey and learn how to read the trail and know most of it before you go. Like you used to do with the driving back in the day before the sat nav, you know, you know, get out that big map book and plan your route. M5 Junction 21, A6 Junction 49 to Beckford. You know. <laughs> Thing is, I was in the attic the other day at my house, you know, and uh, just rummaging around, and I came across this like big mirror because of my clutch and knocked it over, and it smashed, and behind it, there was like a map. Nah, it's not the Goonies, but I have found one of my only ever purchased Ordnance Survey maps for Edel, no less, in the Kinder Scout Plateau. So I might actually go out there in the next few weeks and just ditch the phone and apps and see if we can uh, 
follow a map. <laughs> it could be cool. Right. Talking of maps, open on the right trail there, I'll buy a check. No tea or coffee with me now. Just the pop, eh? I'm gonna have to get one of them space technology flasks. Maybe before the Ridge Monkey, to be fair. There we see. You know, it's kind of cool, like, getting these little upgrades here and there. And I suppose, because it's coming a bit more of a full-time type thing for me, I'm going to need more as I move forward. But for most people like me, when I just started, you need next to nothing. Sleeping bag, a couple of cooking utensils, water, a cook of food, and just a way of getting your head down and being able to sleep in the back of the car for the night, you know? It's not about what you got. It's about getting out there and doing something and just enjoying your weekend away from the grind, you know? Another landmark spot on the trail then, uh, GKP L plus P, I guess that is. Yeah, you know. Then honestly, no people really still did that type of thing, but I'm guessing like, I mean, look where we are. It's pretty random, middle of nowhere. It's not really a landmark, is it? I'm guessing something like pretty heavy went down around that tree area, you know. I'm not gonna make any guesses as to what it was, you know, but yeah, L plus P and a GKP. Yeah, that's like three people, isn't it? Oh, I don't want to think about it. Well, I guess from kind of what I can gather, it looks like we're being brought down into the valley that we were up on the ridge looking down into a while back. So hopefully it's not too far because I seem to remember walking towards that from the other way quite a long time. And now I think we've got to go back around it. Hey, hey, hey. Aye. And check it out. These look like cow fields. Mm, let's hope he's growing cane or something. <laughs> what? Getting some nice little views across the valley here. Check this farmhouse out, man. I wonder what it'd be like. You know, I mean, I know it's hard work up at four or five in the morning and bed at midnight and all that, but I wonder what it's really like to be a farmer and to be able to enjoy living out somewhere like this and away from everywhere else. Because let's be honest, it's not in the middle of a housing estate, is it? I mean, actually being self-sustained if he is, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it must be nice, I'd like it, I think. Nothing in life generally comes easy, does it? Let's be honest, unless you win the freaking lottery. We just don't know many people that have. Oh wait, I do know somebody who won the lottery. There was a dude in Koh Samui I met. I think he won about four million on the lottery in Europe or America, I forget where, but he'd spent two years traveling around, five, six star, baby. And by the time he got to Koh Samui, he really, really didn't have much of it left, but uh, yeah. Someone who won the lottery, eh? Well, gotta say it, I think the views are opening up in the back behind me. Pretty tasty, mate, with the clouds and the sun and shadows and all this landscape. Ah, oh, away from Leicester again. Feeling good, you know. It's gonna be a good trip, this one. I got good vibes. Well, I hope we have to see, but three, four days, North York Moors, plenty of stuff to see and do. Legend, sight. Yeah, but. Just thinking as I'm hiking, you know, the spot for tonight. Checks it on park for night. And apparently there's a sign there that says like, camper vans and vans can park overnight. And it's free after half past six until nine in the morning, I think. I mean, for me as a car camper, that's perfect, isn't it? And let's be honest, that's the beauty of car camping. It's not like I can afford to come up here and splash loads of cheese on like, hotel rooms, motels and campsites and stuff. Gasoline's already one pound feet of 50 a litre and it's cost me about 40 boys just to get here, you know. So yeah, listen up councils of the land. More car parks where vans, motorhomes and car campers can stay overnight. Oh yeah. And that ends my party political broadcast with the National Stealth Service. All right. <laughs> Oh mate, it had to happen, didn't it? Here's me trailing along, trekking along, thinking of making good time and like checking the trail map. And let me show you. I'm thinking like I should be near this lake somehow now and I'm not seeing my marker on the map. And I'm thinking maybe I'm under one of these numbers. And then, because we've walked all this already before. And then I zoom out and I zoom out and I zoom out. And I realize I'm freaking miles away, man. I've gone totally the wrong way. I've got to come all the way back on that damn trail. 
It's 15.02 now. That's how long it takes me to get back to that point. Hey. There's those tidy shots across the valley again. It's not supposed to be tidy shots across the valley. We're supposed to be crossing the valley. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what? Well, back at the point, it took me 15 minutes, so about half hour, 40 minutes wasted. But check out which way I'm supposed to go. I mean, look. That looks like go straight. Not go left. I don't know. It's not straight, but it is where we got to go, I think. Through muddy fields with wildlife. Uh-oh. Here we go. Gonna get tapped by balls now, you know. Might be nice skies behind me, but uh, we're heading into the valley of the beast here. You do, you do. Look at it. It's prime hunting ground for bowls, this is, you know. <laughs> oh, and look. There's that hill that I mentioned that we were walking towards earlier. And we went that way. It makes sense that, like, we go that way. Because the car's over there. Dope. Well, we got lost on the trail again. <laughs> and we're probably going to get into the realms pretty soon when we start losing the light. But you know what? I'm really not that fussed. It's just nice to be out in the countryside again, like, chilling and doing my thing. Pretty sweet. And I'm in no rush. I think we make it back in time for the football, so... What an area, man. Woo, nice. Off your boards, you do, you do. We've got an absolute sludge bath to contend with here, though. Look at this madman. Oh my days. This really is bad. Like, really fucking bad. Ah, oh, mate. This is not gonna go down well, is it? Oh. Oh. Oh my God. I could actually get stuck here. Jesus, you're not throwing a little bit of hay around this area now. <laughs> Just the thought you do. Damn, I was hoping I was gonna have to turn right through this gate, but no, we've got to go through six foot deep sludgy mud. Yeah, man, my foot's fucking totally in it. Ah, oh, you gnarly Schnaffenberg. Um, ay, 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 what the hell? I'm so glad my shoes are still relatively waterproof. That is nuts. I just went like totally in. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold any preconceptions of the farmer over there by the I would imagine he'd have a slight wry smile if he saw my shoe right about now. I bet he hates people coming through his land. I mean check it out look. It's like his lamb grazing area. Footpaths, hey. Oh no, feels a little soggy. Oh me, for four days as well if you don't dry out, you know what I mean? Thinking of, oh it does smell as well. Oh wow, check it out though. We have got lambs here. That's nice, tidy. Ah, my foot's wet, I feel it. <laughs> That's cute as hell though. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna say it. Don't feel sorry for the right foot because, yeah, the left foot got it as well, you know, you know. It's an absolute sludge bath. And it kind of smells. Oof. I hope it's just the area and not my shoes. All right, looking like a bit of a strenuous but nice part of the trail. Look at it. Like the December sun cascading over it. And we're all going upward. So we should get some nice views down. I think into the lake, actually. Coming close to the Gourmet Lake now. About an hour behind schedule. It is what it is. Well, we're losing the light, but it's looking pretty sweet to be fair. And I think about another 10 minutes to the lake, maybe another hour to the car. <laughs> yeah, in the dark. Here we go. Ah, oh, this is pretty cool then, getting our first shots of the lake, but uh, check it out. I think it's all frozen over. Oh man, oh man. Oh, I'm sinking, yeah, I won't, I won't break the ice. Um, yeah, not a bad looking lake though. Especially on a winter's day. <laughs> Some kids throwing rocks in, breaking the ice, I think. Oh, what shot? Look at them colors. Dang, Gourmet Lake, you know. Well, a couple of funky facts about the lake. Straight out the Komoot app then. Um, it's thought to be fed by an underground spring 
and drained by a limestone channel and it's also really popular with wild swimmers and probably this time of year as well to be fair the wild swimmers love a bit of frosty water eh? good for the soul and mind you know pretty tidy spot it also says it's very clean and there's no currents and check this it's surprisingly warm <laughs> i'd be very surprised <laughs> since as there's ice on top of it at the minute honestly how is it even possible i'm going back to the lake i was up at this point a minute ago and now i'm going back towards the lake <sighs> with a freaking trail map man i don't know how to do it honestly it's mad uh, honestly, just hiking and thinking I'm on the right trail and just keep going for 10, 15 minutes and then look at the app and realise I'm wrong, you know, but uh, nice little sunset behind me. And I think, I'm not sure, we might get to the top of this sort of ridge I'm walking up and uh, we might get a view down into the lake. If we're quick, we've still got a bit of light, so let's keep moving. Wow, I'm, 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 I'm knackered now. I'm worn out. Wow. Well, pretty much lost the light and looking pretty good for it none too shabby eh what a trail with all them false turns whew, it's been a bit of a mission to be fair i feel totally bushwhacked still got about another half hour back to the car and maybe that view down into the lake so keep moving shot. dang oh mate i mean i admit it's dark and all the rest of it but uh she blokes but it should be absolutely lush mid summer's afternoon there's a real nice panorama all the way around here what a spot you can definitely sit here and uh chill and enjoy that for a while pretty good but it's cold windy and bleak at the minute so i think i'm gonna rumble back to the car let's do it wow i'm not gonna lie this car park's quite big I struggled to find my car, you know. <laughs> right, let's get in there, let's get stuff sorted, and let's get the football on. I think I'm going to move down the way a little bit because I'm a little bit closer to the road. I don't want people seeing me chilling with my lights on, so yeah, I'm going to move. Let's do it. Oh, dang, it's uh, a bit fresh outside and oh, not too bad closing, but that door's struggling to open a little bit. I'm going to have to get a look at that like when I get back to Leicester in a few days' time, but... Uh, more importantly, the phone's spitting 5G bars like a madman. Kettle's on. And I got fresh pasta. I mean, pre-made, pre-readed fresh pasta. As fresh as you can get like that. <laughs> and, oh, Michael Chaka. And I was going to say, you know, some people have mentioned, like, why don't I get a kettle in it? And I used to have a kettle, if you've seen the first couple of episodes that I made. I used to use a kettle, but two reasons. Space, I haven't really got anywhere else to put it because they're dead and cumbersome and you can't put bowls and stuff in them. And two, the one I did have, it ended up like getting a weird taste inside it. I guess I could have got some stuff to clean it, but as I say, with the size of it, I just figured use a saucepan. It's like multi-purpose. Well, the pasta was good, the coffee was good, and the football was pants. It was a two-all draw, we were winning 2-0, and then we just let it slip. We were rubbish as always. But more importantly, it's dark, it's nearly 8 o'clock. This spot's starting to feel a little bit sketchy. Even though it's a car park, there's like passing traffic. I don't get it. There must be some weird roads around here or something. And cars that are just like pulling up and sitting there for like half an hour and yeah, doing weird stuff. So, 15 minutes from the spot for tonight. I think we'll get ourselves down there. And keep fingers crossed, there's going to be some campers or something because, yeah, it's quite inviting with those signs, fingers crossed. We'll have to wait and see. Let's get down there. All right, 
I'm really hoping there is someone down there tonight. Starting to feel a little bit meh. Out in a new place on my own again, you know. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much you see of this, but uh, we got fog. Thick fog again. Ay, ay, ay. It's not as bad as it was last week, but uh, it's still fog. <laughs> well, the good news is the fog's cleared a little bit. Um, and also, the other good news is we're kind of nearly here. We're only two minutes from the spot. I think it's just on the outskirts of this little village. It's supposed to be a chip shop around right here somewhere. Turn left. Well, I didn't see no uh, uh, long stay. Oh wow, man. Pretty, pretty close, I think. I didn't see the chip shop, gotta be honest. Oh wow, I uh, kind of think we're here. Is this it? Coaches and HGVs, plea pay at meter, cars only. Hey, I don't know where I'm going really, but uh, yeah, this way. <laughs> Let's see, but it's going down. Oh, mate. Oh, there's a van. Ledge. I see him in the corner. Where am I going to park? Near him, I think. Um, mate, there's all bins and everything here. Oh, this is well kitted out for camping out. Oh, this is legend. Right. I need to find my spot. Um, think. I'm going to park in the corner. Ish. Oh, absolute legend. There's a van in the car park. Oh, my confidence is instilled again. So we've got company for tonight. Everything's going to be cool. I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to get your crib set up in the back and see what's going down. Let's do it. All right. Wow. I don't know what it is, but there's some serious wildlife around there. Oh, man. There's houses over there as well. <laughs> We're only about 300 metres from the houses. It's a bit of a weird spot, isn't it? Oh well. Ah, finally the crib's set up and we're chilling. Honestly, this is probably like one of the most kosher spots I've ever stayed in. Not only have I got a van over the way, there's another van pulled in there. And I think I'm in the coach area because there's three separate car parks. There's the car car park at the start, this one. And then I've just walked round the back and there's no kidding you, there's about 20 vans parked round the back. Some of them have got their engines running and stuff, which is why I heard them. Someone started an engine and I wondered what it was. So I went and had a look, 20 vans round the back, mad as hell. And on top of that, there's a sporadic phone signal, so I might be able to watch a bit of TV. But I think I'm going to get some food on and I'm wondering what to do, you know, because like I'm not actually that hungry. I think that pasta pretty much filled me up, so I think... I might do some spanking little pancakes and use up that mix from the last trip. And I've got something funky to put in there as well, actually. <laughs> Blueberries. And <laughs> I thought they were better than that, but yeah, a bit of a manky banana. It's not mouldy, but yeah, they're on a diet, I think. But yeah, pancakes. All right, I'm going to get sick on pancakes. Do some sweet stuff, you do, you do. Fill it up, early doors to bed. And early doors to rise. All right, let's get it on. Oh. <coughs> All right. Let's go, let's go. Little mini ones again, remember. All right. The old scotches. Man, they didn't feel. Oh, they're not cooking quick. One in each corner, you know, you know. Something tells me these not gonna be as good as the last ones. I don't know. Uh-oh. Oh no, man. Oh no, disaster. It's not cooked. This is when you want a lid for your pan, man. Oh, dude, they're overcooked. But not on this side. Hey, ooh, we might get away with it. Not with these two, though. These are too big. Oh, we got it, we got it. Yeah, we got it. 
Oh no mate, he's ripped. He's not up it. Ah darn it. Some blueberries screwed me over man. You do, you do. The old cinnamon. Oh mate, well overdone it that time. Wow, syrup, butter, cinnamon, blueberry and banana pancakes. And a bit of death in paradise. Chilly did the crib, all right. Ah, them belly full, those pancakes are pretty good, but I don't think I'll put banana in them next time. They're a bit weird with banana, but uh, still waiting on death in paradise to see who the murderer is. But I think if I'm what's going on with the door, or rather it's fixed itself, it now opens with no problem and closes no problem, but it won't stay open. Looks like the bracket is like broke and sheared. There's two bits that hold the door on, one at the top and bottom, and then a bracket in the middle, which are kind of, I don't know, does something to the door, but it's screwed on and it's sheared off. Door opens and closes, no problem, but just won't stay open, so. But more importantly, I think it's probably gonna be a good point to end the episode here, you know? But I think it's been a pretty good first day in the North York Moor. It's a bit of a mission getting up here, a nice hike round. We should have done it the other way around, but that's for next time. I might actually scoot up there in the morning and just get a shot, because it's only 20 minutes up the road. Hopefully there's going to be no bother tonight. I don't think there is. There's too many vans around here. They'd all kick off and beat anybody up if they came around here and caused problems, to be honest. But for now, I really, really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series, and definitely hit me in the comments. And as always, take it easy, enjoy the camp, and stay stealthy, you do, you do. All right.